So I'm Rodney Richards. Um, oh shoot. I'm a portrait photographer. Um, here recently, like something I, that I've been working on, um, a series of motion portraits. So you can see things of that sort. Just kind of, uh, I think I finally found my voice, so to speak, as far as in photography. Um, so just kind of showing like everyday people doing what they love to do. Because I love to show off my work, so I just want to help show off other people's passions and things of that sort. So I'll pass that around. Um, so, how did I get here to be able to find my voice? It's kind of what my project, Feast of Family, was all about. Um, and it wasn't to find my voice, but I kind of wanted to shed light on things that I was seeing out in LA. Um, like I told you before, I used to be a bully, and I was bullying other bullies. And teachers really didn't understand that whole concept. And I would constantly get in trouble. And my mother didn't like that. So, um, but I've always been one in my mind to try to help others. Uh, I felt that it's very important. Uh, I remember being that I'm from the East Coast, I remember seeing uh, LA, like in movies and in music videos. And of course, back when I was in middle school, or no, I'm sorry, elementary school, it was the East Coast, West Coast rivalry. So we couldn't throw up the dub in school because we would get in trouble for that because it would start fighting for some reason. But we were all from the East Coast, so it makes no <laughs> sense at all. But yeah, things of that sort. Um, and being that I saw like LA in movies and things of that sort, I was always excuse me, I was always thinking of LA as being a place filled with pretty people, glitz and glamour, and uh, that's what was it imprinted in my mind. Um, and some things you just can't un some things you just can't unsee. So having that in mind. Uh, getting stationed out here, uh, I got stationed up north. I was in the Air Force. I got stationed up north at Vandenberg. It's near like Lompoc. If anybody's ever heard that, there's nothing in Lompoc. You just drive through Lompoc. Um, but I actually got a chance to come to LA and actually see what LA was all about. So having that, that glitz and glamour in my mind, thinking that's what I was going to see when I came to LA, wasn't really, <laughs> it really wasn't what I thought. Um, my first time in LA, I saw, all I remember is uh, the fabric industry and traffic. That's all I remember from the whole trip. And a lot of other things happened. That's the only thing that was, that was really in my mind when it comes to LA and sometimes some things just can't be unseen. Oh, shoot. So, back to my time in the military, uh, getting deployed to Afghanistan was one thing that really taught me to be appreciative of a lot of the small things. Even though at times, that's, now I forget, but thinking back to that time, I was very, uh, very aware of what, what we were blessed to have on this side of, of the world. Um, and even there, like, you have your meals provided for you, things of that sort, and you're getting paid decent. Um, but just the fact that you go into BX, which is like a Walmart, so to speak, you go into BX and there was nothing in there, like literally nothing, like all you had were racks, and that's it. And so you didn't have anything to buy, you couldn't like, if you wanted to eat something, if you wanted to eat something or something special. Oh, good. If you wanted to eat something special, like say for instance a can of ravioli, it wasn't there to remind you of home, so you just stuck in the desert just eating the crappy uh, food that they had in the cafeterias or whatever. Um, it was funny, like a couple weeks ago, I was talking to this art, the, this guy from the army, and he was talking about how uh, we were talking about deployments, and he was tell me where you went and all those things of that sort. And I told him, oh yeah, I was in uh, Afghanistan, I was in Kandahar. And he's like kind of took a jab at me, I guess, because he's like, oh yeah, the where, where they had the chilies. Like, oh, like I didn't deploy it myself. Like, okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but I felt like he was trying to discredit where I was at. And I didn't really take offense to it, but it was just, it's, uh, who else? Uh, though I wasn't outside the wire, 
still people died on base, which is one of the things that it, it's crazy because you would have like mortars come in and hit the ground or whatever, shrapnel goes everywhere. Some dude uh, died in it. he was sleeping in his bed and he died like in his bed. Like that's just the type of thing that was going on over there. And there was also like suicide bombers that supposedly got on base and all those other crazy things. So that time frame really taught me to be very appreciative. Um, and being, when you're deployed and you're like, oh man, I can't wait to go home. That's a, <laughs> as soon as you get there, you're like, yo, I'm ready to go home. And you always want to leave on time. Nobody ever thinks about leaving early, but everybody wants to leave on time and not like three months later, a month later, whatever. Um, but I actually got to see people that, I actually saw people that went home early. And they went home early because they were in a casket. And things of that sort, you're like, okay, it opens your mind uh, to other things that life is bigger than the material things that, we, that we're so focused on here. Yeah, I feel that here we, we live to buy, we live to consume. And seeing that over there, it really opened my mind. Like, there's more to life than just consuming. Um, some things you just can't unsee. Uh, several years later, uh, several years later, in another deployment, I actually got to go to, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, the Kyrgyzstan, I believe. Um, and I was able to go up base and actually see, <laughs> see like the real, what I want to call the real hood. Because we always talk about, oh, this hood, this ghetto, da da da. Over there, it's a tin, you have like, see houses, rows and rows of houses with like tin roofs and things of that sort. It's kind of, I opened to see the, the poverty that's over in that in that area. And uh, I got a chance to work, like we were able to go off base and work with the orphanage and things of that sort. And it's crazy because some of these kids have parents, but during the winter, their parents send them to the orphanage just so they can eat because they don't have money to provide for them year round. So uh, to see that is just, it was, Definitely eye-opening. And they also got the, a chance to come on base and we like kind of demonstrated what we do as cops or things of that sort of providing security to the kids. And that was like during one of the uh, one of the the MWD, which is the, the dogs. <laughs> like the like the military dogs. So that was during the training session to some point, but um, so I already talked about that. Oh, I, I realized that there's a whoa. Wait a minute. Oh, so getting out of Orange County, I moved, or getting out of the military, I moved to Orange County and started to go to school here. Um, and just taking different classes kind of opened my mind up even more and being around different people in California is totally different from people on the East Coast. So um, I began to learn things in, in class here, and I, or not even in this particular class, but in classes. And I realized that there's a lot of, a lot of lies that society buys into, like I stated earlier, the materialism and things of that sort. But even certain things like when people go and order gluten-free, and they don't know why it's even gluten-free and things of that sort. Or even uh, while I was deployed, I was thinking to myself, like, why are we even in this war? Like, why am I here? And many other wars that, that we have been in, like, for what reason were we there? And like I said before, I felt that we lived to buy. Um, so I got to a point, like, being here and taking uh, taking pictures, I felt like I was stuck, and I was like really didn't know what to do. And for me, for, photography is my plan A, B, and C. So when I was stuck and didn't know what to do, I was I became very, very depressed. And I would come to school, smile, hey, how you doing? Da da da. But I was just, it was bad. And I was trying to be some someone that I wasn't. So I was trying to shoot fashion with one of my uh, friends. He shoots fashion, and nothing to not fashion, but it's just not my deal. And I was one of the reasons why I was stuck. So I was struggling to, struggling to find my voice. So I started to go out to LA and explore. <coughs> uh, 
And when I started to explore, I started to see the amount of homeless people that are out in LA. And it was something, the first time I went, I didn't see, like I said, all I remember is fabric stores and traffic. Then I started to go out and just walk, walk the streets and I started to see people, started to go out to Skid Row. And Skid Row is crazy. Like compared to like you, it seems like it's a different part of downtown LA. It seems kind of lawless. Yeah, people like just walking in the middle of the streets, cars don't stop. Sometimes they just keep driving, cops are driving around and nobody seems to care. But it's still in downtown LA, which is, it's crazy. So, um, as I started to, I was kind of like, like a voyeur, I guess, that's the word. Um, just out, just taking random pictures of, of things that I saw. And like I said, some things you just can't unsee. Uh, like my friend here. So, I started to do uh, research on homelessness and things of that sort. And I read a couple studies that suggested that it costs less to house the homeless than to leave them on the street. And not only like, uh, not only to house them, but also to provide treatment for uh, those that need treatment. Um, so I wanted to help, but not in a, not in a way just like taking pictures like this and saying, oh, homeless is, homelessness is bad, like the, oh, poor guy on the side of the road type thing. I wanted to do something different. Uh, attempt to to show something different. Um, so I started to interact with people instead of just being a boy here and taking pictures of them. Um, so I started to get uh, people's stories, and as I started to talk to these individuals that I would was running into in the streets that, that I've met some very, very, very interesting people. Like some of the the nicest, most humble people that I've ever met. And especially in Los Angeles, like, I don't know, like there's, <laughs> there's this one guy, I don't believe I have this picture, but he actually, we were talking for like a good hour. And he, after we finished talking, he was like, well, let me pray for you. Like in, in my mind, that would be something that I would do for him, but he was, reaching out for me and asking me what I needed. And that's something that really, it, it, it really uh, showed me a lot. It showed me his heart and his school. Um, but doing more research, uh, uh, oh, so like talking to people and I'm, Doing more research, I started to see that not everybody that's homeless is on the street because they're doing drugs or drinking or making bad decisions. Um, some people are actually like homeless because of there was a story like gentrification. There was a story of an old couple that lived up in uh, San Francisco. Their rent was like maybe eight nine hundred dollars a month, and they were they were in their seventies, I believe seventies. Yeah, in their seventies. And uh, both of them, or the husband had health issue, issues and things of that sort, so they couldn't, they're 70, you know what I mean? Like, so 70, people that old shouldn't like be working to live, you know, at least in my mind. Um, but the rent was going up and they couldn't afford it. So it's like, well, bye, get out. And they got, they got an extra month to stay there and then they got put out. So they're living in their van. And this is like, they have grandkids and things of that sort, but they were too, I wanted to say prideful, I guess. They didn't want to go and live with their, their children. So they just slept in their van and they went from parking lot to parking lot, got harassed by, or not harassed, but got caught, the cops called on them because they were sleeping in a church parking lot and things of that sort. And it's, they're, they're homeless not because they were lazy, they're 78. They're homeless because rent went up just so you can charge $2,000 for an apartment instead of 800, that's, it's crazy. It's putting, putting people on the street because all that matters in some people's mind is money. And that is, is crazy. And I believe, it, it seems like some animals are even treated better than humans. 
And working at Burlington, you see, um, you see people come in with pets and strollers, and you're looking for the baby, and it's like a dog starts barking at you, like, what is going on? Like, but yet, <laughs> when I'm out, one day I was out in uh, LA, and we were walking back from this restaurant, and this guy was laying on the ground, and we struck up a conversation with him, started talking to him, and he was eating dog food, like, out of a bowl, a bowl of dog food he's eating for, for his dinner. And it's just, I, I, don't, I don't get it. There's some things you just can't unsee. Um, and seeing these things, like, I was going to continue to do this project, but I don't know. It just, it's heavy. It's heavy to, to deal with it. And just, just me living it for, or being with them for a minute, for a moment. But they, this is their life. You know, this is every day, day in and day out, and I, it's it's crazy, and I feel like all I've been doing is just taking pictures, but I, I wanna I want the series to evoke change in someone in something. Uh, that's what the the project is all about. Um, some say I met this one guy. He said that uh, that people that are on the street want to be on the street. They live there because they want to live there. Because he used to be homeless and he he worked his way out. But then listening to his story, he had his family and all those things of that sort. So it's like you didn't do it by yourself, you know. Um, but of course, to tell the story, he, he yeah, to make himself look better, I guess. But um, but I disagree with that thought because I've read where, and I believe in New York, people are intentionally trying to get AIDS so they can get off the street. I wouldn't get AIDS to, for you. No, no, like, what, is there anything in your life that bad that you would want to get AIDS for? Anybody? You know what I mean? And this is how badly someone wants a home. And we take that for granted, for sure. Um, and the news, the LA governor, or the city of LA were, was talking about how, they, I believe it, they were gonna raise $2 billion or have $2 billion in their budget to combat uh, homelessness. And then and everybody's like, oh yeah, they're gonna build this, build this for the homeless, and things of that sort. And then two months later, they're like, oh, we don't know where we're gonna get the money from. So they kind of just like brush it off to the side because it's not so much in the public or so much, uh, I don't know how to say it, but whatever, they, they brush it to the side. But it costs less to house those and treat those than to leave them on the streets. Uh, there was a study done at a hospital, and kind of to just to show you or give you a sense of what it costs to live, let people continue to live on the street. A study that was done in 2006 uh, it was recorded that 542 frequent patients, with 74 of these patients being homeless. The 74 people contributed to 845 visits with an average of a level three of an emergency severity index on the emergency severity index, which is on a scale of one to five and one being the most urgent. More than half of all the patients were discharged and returned to the street, costing a total of almost approximately $5 million. And that's for 74 people at one hospital for a year. That's just one. And imagine around the whole United States how much that's costing, you know? Also, you have to think about the, the criminalization of uh, being homeless. Talking to some uh, some individuals there, they talk about how uh, police are ticketing them for sitting on the sidewalk or having their tents up and things of that sort. And I. Obviously, if they don't have a home, they're not going to be able to pay it. So if you're getting ticketed, you're not paying your ticket, then you get warrants. Once you get warrants, then you get booked. And then you have to think about the manpower that goes behind that. Then you have to house them, feed them, things of that sort. Or even people that are being arrested for having carts where they had their possessions because they stole it from Walmart or Target or whatever because it's not there, so they're going to jail for a cart. And that's more money that's being just
wasted because we refused to help them. Um, and I was I met this guy at uh, when I went to Las Vegas to see my mom, and he wasn't like dirty. He wasn't he wasn't like filthy or anything like that. He looked like he just looked like he just got out of his car and sat on the on the side of the road or sat on the side of the strip. And he was we were just talking and he was talking about how people want him to look like a bum. He was like, I'm not a bum. You know, and it's like, it's true, he's not a bum. And even I don't feel right using the word homeless because I feel that it, it's become like a, a term that we used to belittle somebody. Like if I was to show up here with like holes in my whatever, oh, you look homeless. I don't know. I've even been told that I look homeless because of the beard. But uh, <clears throat> I feel that that word is, I don't know, to me, it feels like we're little in people and forgetting that they are human beings before anything else. And just like uh, the 50 people that died in Orlando, regardless of what your stance is and in, in your beliefs, they were human beings. Just like these people are human beings. And I don't feel that they should, regardless of where they're at in their life, I don't feel like they, they should be just left on the streets helplessly. Um, so that's what the whole project is, is about. And these human beings help me find my voice. Hmm. So, awesome. I just wish I could do more. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. Sorry. So, what do you like suggest that people do? simple thing that people could do. There's many things. I used to live in downtown for like four years mm -hmm. and it just wasn't like, they're not the most easy people to approach sometimes. I mean, obviously not all of them, but I've had like a few, I mean, not any, like a few things don't represent them, all of them, but I just don't know like what I could do if I was there. There's many things. There's, you can volunteer at shelters and things of that sort. Um, just even just talking to them, yeah. even though some may, yet some, some I wouldn't approach. You yeah. know when somebody doesn't want to feel like being messed with. Yeah. Even simple conversation, because I've gotten so many, oh, thank you for spending time to talk to you, type things. And that's, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's, a big, it's a big question, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, because on a social level, what do we do? Yeah. I mean. But when there's, when there's money being spent, like, for instance, in the military, you get a budget. And every year, you want to make that budget so you can get that money back the next year to spend that money again. Well, when you have units buying brand new chairs when you don't need brand new chairs. You have mm -hmm. units buying, buying a new computer when you don't need a new computer. And they're spending this money just so they can get the money the next year. This is money that's going to waste. There's money somewhere out there that we can take from something to give back to them. So it's sometimes, I don't want to say that it's, it's our problem as a whole, not one individual's problem, but there's, it's politics, man. It's politics because there's been studies that they actually build houses for people and they put them in there and they were giving them treatment and they were being funded and they were showing that they were people were getting jobs, people were getting better, and they shut it down because of politics. Mm -hmm. Not because of the cause, but because of politics. Because somebody said that this wasn't right or oh well we shouldn't be doing this, da 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 for what? I don't know. It's like you said, this is a big issue. But I just wanted to try to help in some kind of way. So, yeah. Boom, thank you.